guys, it's January 15th. I've marked my calendar. It's Friday. Happy Friday to all of you. And I think in the last video I told you the next video I did would probably be in my calendar that Kathy Hand gave me last year. The one she gave me this year, we just started marking in. And I said I was going to do the January page. But I have gotten sidetracked. Let me look at it real quick. Um, maybe the next video. <laughs> I've gotten sidetracked and I want to do the Mission Inspiration January event that's going on with Mike Deacon. He has me inspired to follow his 10 point instruction list for a top secret confidential Mission Inspiration for January 2016. So that's what we're going to do today. I just feel like playing a little bit of fun. All right, the first thing he says to do, and I'm gonna link his channel below so you'll know who he is if you don't know who he is. I just found him myself. Um, I didn't know about him, but I found him through, I don't know, following links, I think. I don't know who uh, I was on and found him, but anyway, I'm glad I did. He has a Facebook group that's doing this also, so you can join the Facebook group. The first step is to apply patterned under paper or tissue. And then the second step is to apply a thin coat of gesso, and then you're to use two rubber stamps, and then you're to add torn strips of book text, then you're to add three collage elements, three colors of your choice, make marks with white or black paint, add a quote or a phrase, add doodles in black or white or both, and add drips or splatters. So, I'm going to put this in fast forward while I do all these steps. You will be able to find all this information on his video channel, on, his, on the video he did for this. You'll be able to find it on his Facebook page, and I'm going to link all that below. And I'm just going to do the process and go through everything, because if I do it step by step like I normally do, it'll take a long time. And it's already late in the afternoon. I'm just getting started in here. It's already after 2 o'clock, and so I only have like an hour maybe to, to do this. So I want to do it in fast forward so you can see how it goes. Okay, so let's get started and at the end I'll come back and say hello and goodbye and all that stuff. Okay, let's get going.
Okay, guys, that's all I'm going to do. I have not signed it yet. It's still wet from the splatters. I will probably, once it's dry, I might add a few more splatters because some of them are kind of gathering together. I still like it this way, but I'll see what happens after it dries. I'm going to let it dry naturally. Um, after it's dried, after the splatters are done, if I add more, I'll go over it with a coat of sealer. And I think I'll just call it done because I'm trying to follow the rules. I'm not going to do anything more to it. My natural instinct would be to do more, but <laughs> I'm not going to do any more. Let me show you a close-up real quick while it's still drying. I'll go over the list real quick with you since I went and fast forward. Um, apply patterned under paper or tissue. You saw me use the first paper. That was a jelly print. Um, I don't know if it was an actual print that I made or one of those leftover prints. I think it was a leftover. Like I had used my stencils on my jelly plate and then dabbed it off onto a jelly, I mean a deli paper. So I think that's what that was, just a leftover, but it had a lot of stuff on it, so I laid that down first. And you can still see it through here. You can still see some of the red poking through, which is cool. Um, cover with a thin coat of gesso, which I did with the card here. Uh, that way I got a real thin layer. If you put it on with your brush, you, you get a little bit of a heavy hand sometimes, or I do, and you might put more gesso on than you want, but I wanted to see through the gesso um, to the, to the background page that I put on as much as possible, which I did accomplish a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit, which is good. I'm still happy. So anyway, I spread it on with a card and it put it on real thin. Now on Mike's video, what he did was he watered his gesso down just a little bit. I think he got his brush wet. I'm not sure, you'd have to go check. I don't wanna speak for him. But I know that he said something about watering down his gesso just a little bit. I did not water mine down. Um, so that's the way I did mine. The next thing was to use at least two rubber stamps. The stamps I used were one of the Distress stamps from the collection I always use. Whenever you watch my videos, you'll see me use these all the time. They're no longer available. They are discontinued. Um, they're by Glitz, and I've told you this before, but I'll tell you again in case you're new. Glitz. They're by Glitz. And the glitzitnow.com um, address that I tried to go to when I was looking for these for someone, uh, it didn't exist, so I don't think that works anymore either. But anyway, I used one of my distress stamps, and then I used this um, meter stamp looking stamp from Ink and Dink and Do. And I don't think that it has a name on here. I tried the other day to find a name, and I couldn't. So that's what I used for the stamps. The ouch. Sorry about that. Um, add torn strips of book text. I already had some strips in my scrap bin, so I pulled out a bunch of strips. I did not do anything else to them except tear off a little bit of the straight edge. I left them in long strips and just put them across in the center. And I didn't cover the page. You can see the book text poking through here and some down here around her. Everywhere I left it kind of pale. You can see it poking through, and that's fine. You don't have it all over the page. I was fine with that. I had three collage elements. Uh, I had printed out from free printables somewhere. I, it's not written on the paper, or I tell you. Um, this vintage woman and butterflies, and I cut out one, uh, two butterflies and the woman, so that's three elements. And I made one of the butterflies wings for her. And so, as you can see, that's where I put them. Three colors of your choice. I used the Martha Stewart, hang on, let me get them real quick. The Martha Stewart Satin mm, Porcelain Doll, which I love. It's very pale. I like to use this a lot. Um, Spa Blue, which is one of my favorites by Americana. That's one of my favorite colors. And the other color was Apple Barrel Victorian Green. And I basically just put this porcelain color down all over the page, outlined her, and then I came in with this Victorian green and I kind of started at the edges and came into the wet paint because it didn't dry real quick. This is a little creamier. Her paint's really creamy, at least this one is. And it's, I don't know, it's just great. I like using it. And then I brought in the blue and kind of brought, um, 
different areas of the blue into the page. And then I came back over with this. And you see in the video as I go along, I added more of this and I kind of just blended it all together. So it just had a faded look like it was a distressed background. Maybe she's sitting in front of an old cabinet or something and it had been painted Victorian green, later blue and later beige and all kinds of colors. You know how that goes. Then the next one was make marks with white or black. I used both. Um, no, no, I used I used one. He kept, he said one, white or black. So I used black, and then I spread it out on my mat. And I took the card and dabbed the edge in, and I just dabbed on the on the page in different places. And then the next one, add a quote or a phrase. I kind of went with a phrase. It's not really a quote or a phrase, but she just looked looked like she was daydreaming, and she looked like she had a little book she was reading, or maybe her diary or something like that. So I just printed out the word daydream. I didn't make it fancy. And I printed out the, the uh, definition of daydream and, and put it down here on, along the page. I didn't take the paper and uh, color it in or make it match the background or anything. I like how it stands out. I'm just going to leave it like that. Something simple and basic. This was just for fun, just something to do for um, play. It wasn't something I wanted to put a lot of time into. That's what I love about these. You can just follow his instructions and just do it. And I've already got a page done. So I really like how that turned out with just leaving it the way it is. Add doodles in black or white or both. So what I did was I took my black pen and I came in and I just scribbled around. First I outlined the word and the definition and part of her body. Um, I wasn't loving doing her body very much so I kind of left parts of it undone. You really can't tell. And I scribbled in little, little doodles on the lines. It kind of looks like an EKG reading or something. but. Um, then I scribbled a little bit on the edges of the lines around the words and the, and the definition. And then I took my white china marker. What I used for the pen was uh, Pilot Parma Ball. And for the white, I used my um, Sharpie china marker. And I just scribbled into the um, background. And you really can't see it. It just sort of added a little more white to it. Up close you can see it like right here I can see it really well I don't know if you can but I can and it really isn't meant to be like something that stands out I just kind of wanted to just use both colors so I did and then add drips or splatters it's the last one so I just took my black paint and I spread it out here watered it down took my brush and kind of flicked it on in different spots and you can see where I've done that so and because of where I put it and because of how I did it, the type brush I used, I probably should have used a fan brush, which is like this. But I didn't want that wide of a span of spray. So I used a uh, Filbert, I think it's a Filbert. No, not a Filbert, it's a, where'd it go? Oh, it's in here. Um, a liner brush, I think it is, a little bit thicker one. And I just splattered it in different spots. And because it's so close, they're kind of congealing together. You know, the black's kind of blending together. But some of the spots didn't, so that's good. I think once it's dry, I'll be just fine with it. I don't think I'm going to add any more. Now that I think about it, I'm not going to waste time coming back and adding more. I'm just going to let it dry, and then I'm going to put a coat of deco page on it. And that's what I'm using for the sealer today. So that's it. I'll put the links below to Mike's channel if you're interested in um, playing along with the mission inspiration for January. And you could do this as many times as you wanted to and come up with a different thing every time. The book I used, I didn't tell you about that. It's just your Canson Mixed Media 7x10 inch 98 pound XL series book. I use these for a lot of things, so it's it's good paper, it holds up, it's not your heaviest, it's not your lightest, but it, it works for what I like to do. So I might keep this and attach it to the back of the page. I don't know if I'll collage on the back of the page or not, it just depends, I haven't decided that yet. So I'll do this again, I'll probably do it for February. Um, I may do it again for January, and then I'll share it with you. Okay, so I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a great weekend. This is Friday, like I said earlier in my calendar. I don't know when I'll get this uploaded. I don't really think I'll have time today. It may not be till next week. 
So if it was next week, I hope you had a great weekend. And I will talk to you again later, okay? Bye-bye.